Hello everyone, this is Brad Vick. Today this is a tutorial to make uh, this uh, aperture. I've made the aperture for quite many times, um, but uh, it was either done in animation nodes or done in a very old version of geometry nodes with a completely different design of workflow. So I'm going to update this workflow because people ask this so many times. So let's just start. So here we in Blender, as always, I'm going to use the presets, which you can download for free from the link in the description. Uh, the principle is extremely easy. That uh, we basically just uh, make up certain blades and we instance these blades in many different places. And finally, we move these um, blades to some other direction. And it's very simple, okay? So let's start with our blade modeling and I'm going to add a curved linear some people ask uh, the tutorial for this one but it's essentially just a curve line and uh, resample curve it's just the two node things you do not need to think anything else of course there are some additional function of this centered and the step and the stop but most of the time you do not need to worry about it so I'm going to uncenter that so it's just a single line to the right and then I'm going to add a screw deformer I've shown the process of building these presets uh, just uh, earlier in which we can basically control the angle and the resolution of this screw. It's basically just our screw modifier. Okay. And uh, I need to define this angle based on how many blades I need. We are going to instance this blade. So let's take a curve this, uh, take a curve circle. And I'm going to take a instance on um, points. And let's instance our blade. So now we have all these kind of blades uh, collapsing together. It's very annoying. Let's uh, firstly decrease the, the amount of instance. Maybe eight blades is enough. And then we are going to calculate this angle. It's very simple. We take a, a resolution into an integer. And this is simple math that we use 360 degree, which is 2 pi. Uh, in Blender, we can type in TAU, tall, which means 2 pi. And then we have this number of uh, three uh, f of uh, 6.283 and so on and so forth. Okay. So now we have this. But uh, the blade by itself is not rotated properly. So we need to do another math. We are going to combine Euler rotation. I actually do not uh, really like uh, to use this radiance because I will get confused how many degrees am I using. So I'm going to use a 360 degree. And instead, I'm going to take that to radians to put into this angle. Okay. And then I'm going to use this uh, factor to multiply with the index. And I put it into the z axis. So now I have uh, our setup being aligned properly. Now we have finished the basic blade modeling and the instancing. Next is just to translate these uh, blades into certain directions uh, to form a compact arrangement. And uh, let's firstly get a initialized state. So we keep the radius to zero. And we can translate uh, instance because I want to use the local transform so that it only goes to a direction which is related with the rotation we defined. So now if you move onto y-axis, you can see the blade is moving in a very interesting direction. Okay. And then if you move on x-axis, it will uh, make sure that the blade is in a more compact uh, arrangement. So uh, we basically just need a relationship into this uh, x and y-axis. So here I need to a, keep a clamp because I want to use one value to control the two changes. 
and then I combine XYZ. into this translation. Uh, I use a clamp so that I can clamp uh, these controls into zero to one range. And uh, I benefit to that is I can remap zero to one. This remap zero to one is just a simplified version of map range. And of course you see that uh, this node is much smaller than the map range. And uh, I do not remember the number exactly. So I think I'm just going to eyeball that. So firstly, I'm uh, moving on y-axis, and then I just need a number to make it collapse. Okay, I think this is fine. And then if you animate this value from zero to one, you get this kind of blade movement. Of course, you can make it uh, into larger values I think uh, as long as the relationship or the ratio is being met, actually it does not need a clamp at all. But it's up to you. Okay. Up to now we have basically finished this setup. Uh, but in reality, this kind of blade is more interesting with kind of curvatures. Okay, so we're going to do that part as well. Uh, this is uh, kind of very simple to do, but there are many different ways to do that. So one way is that you go with a simple deformer or simple deform in which you have a kind of band options, uh, change the angles and so on. Okay. And this simple deform is not available in geometry nodes. So I made a preset which is only doing the band part. This is simply because I do not see any interest in other parts. So you can do that and immediately you have this result, okay. And you can try to play around with this kind of parameters and so on, okay. But I'm not very sure with this design of band deformer, so it's very possible that uh, you will see another node or I will delete that forever. And you never know, okay. So there is an alternative way that you want to bend a curve. So we are going to do that a set position. And we take a position, we take a vector, we can take a rotate vector, and we combine all the rotation. And then we take a spline parameter. Spline parameter is basically from zero to one from the start to the end of a curve. So now this is we are going to remap zero to one to increase the degree of it. So now we made a band. This is the same as the band deformer, but the, the internal algorithm is different. Uh, whichever way you like, there are so many ways to achieve this result. Okay. And finally, just to play around this whatever values, but you also realize that there is a kind of Z findings of these kind of planes. There are also many ways to solve this problem. Due to curiosity, I've checked how lens aperture really works in real life. How do they really avoid this kind of Z-fighting? And I found that uh, when they are building this kind of lens aperture, it looks like kind of a straight blade, but uh, what it happens is that, uh, let's exaggerate it, that the blade looks something like this, or they has been layouts like this. So uh, one is on top of the previous one, but it's below the previous one. Okay. So in this case, we aren't going to do the perfect version. I'm just going to cheat that a little bit. So I'm going to rotate this on X axis and immediately you can see that this Z fighting is resolved. Okay. And if you aren't sure why it works in this way, you can just make that exaggerated so that you can see how it works in reality. Okay. So one blade is below the previous blade, but it's uh, on the top of the next blade so that everything is on the same plane, but they do not have this collision issue. Okay. At the end, we can finish this setup with uh, solidify and beveling. Uh, there are many ways that we can add a solidify inside the geometry nodes. It's uh, essentially just the extrude mesh. So you can add more offset scales. Okay. 
or the other way is that you can add a solidify using modify. But you will realize a problem that no matter how you increase the thickness, it doesn't work. Uh, this is simply because uh, we are adding, we're working with instances yet, so external modifiers are not accessible to the data, so you have to realize instance. Okay. The reason I mention about this, since we have this solidify inside the geometry nodes that can work with the original geometry, is because we can mimic the solidify inside the geometry nodes, but we cannot mimic the bevel modifier inside the geometry nodes. So you still have to learn this realize instance. Okay. And uh, you actually will realize that this beveling is working minimally. This is because the starting vertices, which is a point, is limiting the beveling of other edges. This is very annoying. So to solve that, uh, what you can do is you transform yet the initial lines. That instead of having this kind of starting from the origin and being screwed at origin, we can just rotate, uh, move that a little bit. Then we will have this kind of geometry that opens more room for this beveling to occur. Okay, so this is just a concept. And uh, yeah, basically this is yet. And if it goes to zero, you'll find it doesn't close. You can simply change that with the parameters. So now you fixed it. And let's decrease the value. So there are lots of ways that you can do. And uh, by the end of the day, it's uh, just the parameter things that you can open, close, bevel more, bevel less, offset more, offset less, change the resolutions, change the resolutions there and there. So this is basically it. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.